Welcome back. Today, let's get this on the front shocks. Welcome back, my name is Mouse, and uh, today we are back on the Rover 100 pickup. Uh, the plan is today to try and get it sat off axle stands for the first official time on its wheels on shock absorbers. So um, I'm unsure how we're going to do it yet. Yeah, I'm going to throw the shock absorbers on and see where they land to start with, and then we're going to go from there. Basically, I'm going to probably come off the new beams that I put in the new cross members, and we'll uh, we'll go from there really. But apart from that, I've got no idea. <laughs> Today is literally winging it. So, after a bit of uh, thinking and putting it in, the, obviously the two places I've got, um, the front is just too close. There's, I'll be cutting way too much out of the subframe and I've already cut big chunks out of it. I've still got to cut some more out of it, obviously get this engine in there. Um, so, I think what we're going to do is we're going to cut these um, sort of holders, whatever you want to call them for what was the hydroelastic cylinders. We're going to cut them off and we're going to mount it on the back. It does mean cutting into the bodywork a little bit more. But um, I'm planning to put basically a strengthening bar, you know, like um, a lot of modified cars, like an easy way to strengthen the engine base, put a sway bar on it. I'm actually going to integrate mine into the car itself. So there'll be one running along the back. I'm not too sure if it'll go right along the back or just at the front of the, the firewall here. I'm not sure yet. And then there'll be one right at the front. They're both going to be quite complicated. They're going to be quite a... Uh, quite an odd looking piece but once they're in they'll, they'll suit quite well so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to drop both of these wheels off because currently in the way get rid of these um, top mounts and then we're going to cut just a little triangle out of the bodywork just to allow the shock to actually move a bit freer and then basically we'll actually design the mounts from that point because obviously they're, they're on the front as you've just seen they catch they're on the back they still catch but I'm hoping that once I cut that off so we can lean in a bit more it should be fine it shouldn't interfere with the engine when i had the engine in last week it shouldn't interfere with it too much if it's in the way the engine can be moved there's ways i can squeeze that in but the suspension needs doing first before we can carry on it was just a mock-up last week uh, but as as you saw last week uh, there's still some work to be done on the subframe the way i'm the way i was looking at it, i don't think it's going to work so it might just be a fact of actually cutting uh, a big slide and reinforcing it uh, just to get the engine to sit a bit low because it was still sitting too high and the bottom pulley was actually on the subframe. So I'm unsure what I can do yet, but we're going to crack on with this. I can't see this one being a one-day job like the rear one was because the rear was actually quite easy to do, whereas this is quite light in the way. So we're just going to focus on, we're going to take both wheels off now we're going to trim down to the same size and then we'll just focus on one side at a time. Uh, it'll be the same sort of bracket as the um, rears are, basically a square bracket with a plate in the middle. So let's get cracking.
So, we've got both on now. Um, there's still a little bit to trim out, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to lift the car up and we're going to use the jack, basically, to find a comfortable ride height for it. So, we, we need to get the point to where the wheels are actually on the ground and then, basically, we're lifting it up from that point. I'm hoping that the shock absorbers aren't going to stick too high because obviously we've still got a bonnet to put on. Um, but they shouldn't do. The angle we've got them at, they should be okay. But like I said, all the measurements I've taken may change once the wheel's sitting higher. So once it's actually sitting on the ground on a ride I'm happy with, then it's when we need, need to take measurements. I'm just trying to get a rough gauge for it at the minute. So we're going to... I'm going to have to use the little jack because the big jack's not really accessible Sorry. so yeah we're, we're gonna ungrab the jack now and we're gonna slide it in lift it off the axle stands we won't we don't need them now for now and then basically what we'll do is we'll lower the car down until i'm happy that it's a nice ride high i want and then we'll go from there we know from the rear that there's not a lot of flex in these like i said in the last video they i think they're the hardest set of coil springs you can get for the car uh, they're not the track uh, trophy ready or whatever it is they call them as. These are just quite a firm set of shocks. Take in mind the car weighs naff all anyway. So we're not going to see a lot. It's more the fact that they'll flex a little bit and it's better than hydroelastic. So we'll crack on with that now. Like I said, we'll lower it down and then we'll go from there. Let's get cracking. It actually looks really good there. Uh, there's quite a nice bit of rake on the back. I'm going to lift the back up slightly more, um, but I'm going to do that just by pushing the subframe down. I'm not going to mess with the, how the shocks are. The sh rear shocks do need a plate at the bottom because they're only just catching. Um, the way the shock absorbers work on this, well, on most cars, is they sit flush with the body. So on the front here, we, we will design them slightly different to the ones on the back uh, because the ones on the back Oh, it's slightly different. So basically what we do on the back is we'll get a piece of, I've got some nice thick sheet steel now, and basically we'll cut, when, when we're coming to weld it up, obviously not now, we'll actually use it as a spacer as well. So basically you'll have the main bolt where it sits, there'll be a little shim between, and then this plate on the bottom, which gives it a much bigger surface area to sit on, instead of just catching the tube where it is now. Um, so it'll be nice and strong, and uh, Everywhere where there's a join on the back and on the front it will be gusted. I can't justify getting a tube notcher. Rob, I am sorry buddy. I know what you mean, it, it would look a lot better. Um, but I can't justify getting it because it might only be this project I'm doing. If it's not and you guys like what I'm doing and we carry on growing as a channel, of course I'm going to get a tube notcher. I'm going to get a pull of drill. I'll get all the tools I need. But for now, I'm trying to keep it to quite a tight budget, and it's it's quite difficult <laughs> juggling everything, and obviously with family and that. So, but your support is greatly um, valued, and uh, like I said, thank you for all the advice that people have been giving me. Uh, uh, Rob from Vision Vision Auto, who's doing obviously another Metro like me, but he's putting a V5 in the back of his. Jump over and see his channel, man. It's just madness. What he's doing with his intercool is just a masterpiece. Um, but for now, we're just going to crack on. I'm quite comfortable at that height. Like I said, the measurements will change. They have changed straight away. I can see that. But it's possible, now that it's actually on that, that I may not actually have any catch. So we're going to jump over this car now and we're going to have a look. So let's get cracking.
So then, two plates, Santa drilled. Drilling isn't my favourite sport, as you've seen there. Um, I do agree with everyone now that keeps saying get a uh, pillar drill. I'd like to, but like I said before, I am trying to keep to a budget. So if one does come up cheap, I'll try and grab it. If not, I'll have to wait. So, what we're going to do with these is slightly different to what we did with the other one. Whereas in the other ones, we actually made it into the... Um, basic square that we're putting it in because this the front one's sitting at a funny angle what we're going to do is we're going to put the both plates on we're going to cut the little tab off the front of them as well it doesn't need that uh and basically we're going to cut that off and then we're going to put the plate on top and then we're going to lift the plates so it's actually sat it may only be touching on the back like these back two corners but what we'll do is once it's in we'll get two little pieces of plate and we'll basically plate it so it sits nice and firm it's a pain with the way it is because they are sitting at such a funny angle. Like I can move them in a bit, but obviously then it's going to catch the wheels. I figured out how I can stop it um, doing full lock and I buy some uh, rubber blocks and basically put them on the steering arms so it can only go so far. And basically we'll drill through and put a big bolt or something through so it can only go so far. But we're going to use the Metro steering rack hopefully. That'll be uh, next time we're up here. So we're going to go back over to the car now. So unfortunately the camera didn't record again. I am really sorry about this. I have no idea what's wrong with it. Uh, but the car is sat on coilovers. I'm unsure it's going to stay sat on coilovers because I'm currently welded to the subframe, which obviously needs to be able to be able to be removed. dead dead chuff with that as it still needs a bit of work at the front here that sort of bit on the arch just there which is sort of i knew that so i was going to sort of shape it up like that and still a bit of work on these rear arches but we still knew that anyway but apart from that it's a really really nice rake i'm liking that so we're going to lift this back up probably another 10 mil but we're also lowering the profile of the tire these tires are a bit chunky for my liking so we're gonna make Give it a smaller profile on the tire. I'm just going with the worst case scenario at the minute. That's sort of this sort of width for the tire for now. And we come around the back. Like I said, it's sitting absolutely beautifully. It's now sitting. It actually seems to have levelled itself out. Like I'm not tilting the camera or nothing. That's levelled itself out because all the weight was on this side. Like I had a wheel on this side, and obviously I had this side touching. So it's levelled itself out quite nice now. The gearbox will allow, will have a little bit of weight on this side as well, so we'll be okay on that. You'll have to ignore the gas bottle, but like I said, that's a absolutely beautiful rake. I'm dead chuffed with that. I'm dead happy with the way I've done it. So, you can see, so they're both levelled, they're both the exact same height. This one's a little bit more back than that one because there's a weld in the way of that one I'd like to be able to push it back but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from here this bar here down to there I'm going to put these engine bars in and basically make it like that and then I'll make some plates to go around the top here and basically just push it down just that just that bit more which currently is as you can see there's quite a gap there now so basically I'll try and I'll get some more of this and we'll basically make a plate that goes all the way across just to push it out a bit more and get it comfortably to set the nitrate bit. I'm dead chuffed with the way that is. So we'll get put in this engine and see where we go. full 1.4 engine of the Alpha is actually in the car now. Obviously it's missing alternator and things like that, but it's not going to really make that much difference. Um, 
it's sitting on a funny angle, but that's because I've not got engine mates to get it to sit right to. But it's rather low. Like, it's a stunning rake. And I mean, like, I'd be dead happy if we could live like that. Um, there's obviously ways you can do it. I can try and find a smaller sump, which I might actually do, because if I can get it to stay at this sort of rake, I'll be quite happy. It's not going to be happy with tire rub, but I know I've still got some work in the arches to do. I'm going to reduce my cabin size a little bit, but it's going to give me the ability to actually have a good sort of lock in. Obviously, we don't want it to go lock to lock because it'll start rubbing on the shock. So we're going to, I'm going to see if I can find a way to stop it doing that. I know someone said that I can buy like a, an adjuster kit that stops it coming in so far. So we'll, uh, we'll have a look into getting one of them. But It's a Rover 100, satin coilovers all round. It's quite comfortable. I've just put a 10 mil spacer in it. I'll get a made out of solid steel, so it's not just out of a couple of washes. It's no good, really. Um, I'm super happy that we're all enjoying this uh, journey. Like I said, it's, the channel's slowly growing, and I'm dead chuffed. It's more than more people watching this than I ever thought would, so I'm super happy. Uh, the last video where we were basically uh, rebuilding the engine, I said about naming her. Uh, so drop your names. I'll pick three out at the end of uh, sort of August sort of time. Um, well, once I come back off my holiday, and uh, we'll basically then I'll put the three names in the description, one, two, or three, and then basically you lot can pick from them three what we call her. Uh, it will be you know it's the Ferraris and Lamborghinis. You have like Huracan or Putafini or whatever gibberish down the side. It'll be. Um, done at the front and also be on the back as well um, and on the front I've got a surprise for the bonnet I, I dropped a bit, bit of a hint earlier on that we're gonna bring it so it's Renault Clio sort of style so it opens frontwards so thank you very much for watching please hit that like button it lets me know that you're enjoying the videos drop a comment anything you want to talk about anything any suggestions I, I love hearing them like I've got such a big community on Facebook and Instagram I, and the community's growing on um, YouTube as well. It just needs to grow more. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying them. I want to carry on doing this. Um, so thank you very much, and uh, feel free to subscribe. And thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.